Hello everyone, I am Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded vehicles from the GTA Online Criminal Enterprises DLC in terms of lap time. As always, the position counter is in the top left with the best lap time the vehicle achieved in the top right, and since there are cars from a number of classes here, the positions within their own classes are also listed in the top left. This video lists all cars added on day one of the Criminal Enterprises DLC. For any drip feed cars added after that, other classes of cars because I've tested them all, and all the information you need about this series, check the playlist linked in the second line of the description, and feel free to check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get testing results of any new cars a little bit early. So all cars from this DLC, except the upcoming Brioso and Sentinel widebodies, have the flag that means that they get increased traction with lower suspension, so the lower suspension options are the best in the same way that you need a spoiler for maximum performance. When it comes to the Greenwood, it's honestly just nice to have a muzzle car like this that doesn't drive itself all over the place, like the Vamos, Tulip and Arbiter. It's an okay lap time for muzzle cars, it could be worse, it, it probably couldn't really be better given the type of car it is, so not bad from the Greenwood. The Omnis EGT, it's a mixed bag really, it doesn't have that same raw acceleration that other electric cars do off the line, instead sort of picking up the speed well in the mid range of acceleration, kind of like how the Tesseract does. It's mostly notable on the hairpin on this track where you can see that it kind of struggles to get back up to speed but on all of the corners it's fine and a 1 minute 4 lap time is very respectable despite it being a little bit understeery which is kind of what you'd expect from an electric car with middling grip anyway. In 4th place for the day 1 cars in this DLC is the Corsita which inexplicably has the bouncy suspension advanced flag that plagues cars like the Itali GTO and the Toros. While it's not as bad as in those cars, I did find myself having to compromise on certain lines in more bumpy parts of the track in order to not get bounced around and crash, so without that flag I think it would be easily into the 101s. Nevertheless, it's still a very solid lap time and a very solid sports car, even if it is a little bit oversteery thanks to that bouncy flag. In third place we've got the Sterling GT, which for the expanded and enhanced versions of the game is the new HSW car available right now, and my god has this improved. It goes from a 1 minute 6 lap time and 1.5 seconds per lap slower than the non HSW Turismo Classic, to a sub 1 minute 1 lap time and only 2 tenths of a second slower than the HSW Turismo Classic. Even though it's a little bit down in terms of outright grip levels, given that the Sterling is helped by off-roads making it smoother over bumps, which the Turismo isn't, and has a monstrous top speed as we'll see from the top speed testing video tomorrow, the HSW Sterling is definitely able to compete with the HSW Turismo Classic at the top of the sports classes class for races now. It hasn't quite taken the top spot in the class that it had all those years ago, but it's right up there again. Remember as well that the Sterling can be used in regular sports races, and this lap time that it gets puts it right into the top tier alongside the HSW Banshee, Pariah, Italia RSX, Italia GTO, HSW S95 and Neo. That makes 7 cars at the top of the sports class, which is unprecedented in all the times I've been covering this game. It's easily the best balance for regular sports class races that we've ever seen. And the Sterling GT is unique in that it's the first car ever to be in the top tier for two separate classes. What wild times we live in, eh? Incredible from the Sterling GT. But there are two cars from this DLC, at least day one part of the DLC, that are quicker than it, with first up being the Torero XO. Now, the new Torero is a very, very fast car. As you can see by the lap time and the position that it gets within the supercars class, that is very, very quick. But the Torero, as well as the Omnis EGT that we saw earlier, are affected by the same bug that I mentioned in a previous fact finding video where the active spoiler on these cars, or, or even adding an aftermarket spoiler, doesn't give any extra traction. Therefore both the Torero and the Omnis, as well as likely the upcoming 10F, are constantly stuck in a state equivalent to having no spoiler at all. With a working spoiler they'd obviously be quicker, and the Torero would probably likely even be competing with the HSW Ignis and Cyclone at the top of the class. As it is, it's still a bloody quick car because it has huge engine power, but it's the lack of grip that sets it back from a lap time perspective. 
It is immense fun to drive, mainly because that power to traction ratio is a lot higher than in other cars. It's basically like a quicker adder where the skill involved in longer braking distances and knowing when to get on the power will have a bigger impact than in other cars. If you want more info on the active spoiler bug that also affects the Italia RSX and Comet S2s, I'll leave a link to the fact finding video on that topic down below. It's well worth a watch, it's probably one of the best videos ever on my channel and it's especially worth watching just for the very end for an even more ridiculous bug affecting the X80 Proto, so definitely check that out. But ultimately, the number one quickest car from this initial batch of vehicles from the DLC is the LM87, and it's exactly what you'd expect from a Le Mans style prototype in this game. Big grip, just like we've seen before from the RE7B and the S80RR, but this also has a straight line speed to back it up. Again, we'll see exactly what the top speed is in the top speed testing video tomorrow, but that is why it's about half a second quicker than the S80 and the RE7B and how it almost sneaks into the top 5 for the Supers class. Obviously for those on old gen it is in the top 5 for the Supers class given that there's no HSW cars at the very top and it's about on the same pace as the Krieger. It's just a fraction off the Emirates in terms of lap time, the LM87, and there's not an awful lot else to say really beyond the fact that this is a very, very quick car and it's something that you need to build the speed up with. Braking a little bit later every single lap and taking each corner a little bit faster because its grip levels are such that it will be able to go quicker and brake later than you, know, than you would ever imagine any car could. And that is very similar to the other sort of really high downforce cars and the open wheelers. It's the sort of thing you've got to build up that speed, but when you do, and when you learn a track and learn the car on that track, it will give you a very, very good lap time. Most people probably are going to be quicker in the Torero, to be honest, because the the, the LM87 just requires absolute, you know, nailing every single corner uh, as quickly as possible. But either way, you'll see in the comparison how they sort of build up their lap times very differently with the LM87 being all about grip and then the Torero being sort of more straight line speed based. But yeah, two very quick supercars added to the list. The HSW cars obviously, you know, ruin it at the very, very top level. Otherwise, the LM87 will be right in the top tier with the Krieger and the Emirates anyway. But as it is, that's now the second tier of supercars. But yeah. Some really nice cars in this first batch, I think, and I'm kind of looking forward to the drip feed. Obviously, if you want to see what all the vehicles are that are coming from this DLC, including all of those that are unreleased, I've already done a video about that. Um, I'll leave that link down below as well. But yeah, some really interesting cars still to come, I think, and it'll be interesting to see how they do for lap time and how they perform. Like I said, the top speed testing video for all of these cars will be coming tomorrow as well keep an eye out for that because some of them are pretty amazing especially that sterling gt um, and yeah you can see the comparison here in the video as well between the sterling gt as it is normally and then the hsw upgraded sterling gt remember that with hsw upgrades there's no increase or improvement to grip levels or traction so it's still just a sterling gt and you've got to keep that in mind you're going to have much longer braking distances and you've got to you know slow down a lot earlier but yeah, you can you can obviously see in the comparison, especially when it gets to that back straight, you'll be able to see just how much it takes off. And it's really nice to have the Sterling GT sort of mixing it up with the Turismo Classic at the top of the Sports Classics class, honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Check the links down below in the pinned comment or the description for those videos that I mentioned, especially the fact finding video, it's well worth a watch. Keep an eye out for the top speed testing video, make sure you subscribe, notifications on, all that kind of stuff. And then obviously every Thursday when there's a new deal, a new drip feed vehicle added from this DLC, I will be testing it. So again, just make sure you subscribe and keeping an eye on the channel and you'll always be informed of how well the cars are doing. Oh, and the new helicopter, I will be testing that, but I wanted to get the cars done first and then I'll test the helicopter later on. It's not as much of a priority, I think. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want testing results early. And remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.